morning everybody uh, just a brief update because yesterday I watched most of one game but uh, that will probably be something on my talking list about uh, health update I am okay to go to work uh, I don't have the headaches anymore um, I feel a little Fitter. The funny thing is that lately uh, when I get sick it's usually a headache and I just feel weak and completely done uh, and that's despite getting enough sleep so I don't know that's just how it is but you know two days of work and then long Christmas uh, weekend if you wish uh, so. I'm looking forward to that and probably during Christmas uh, you won't get many updates uh, A there are not that many games and B I probably won't need to concentrate on family but let's see how it goes on uh, there are four things I want to talk about today which is some match fixing news uh, a little bit about the United coach. Of course, there was some Bundesliga played. That's probably the most important. And a little bit of the Carabao League Cup, which I think is honestly much less important. Uh, let's start with the match fixing because that's I think is almost the most interesting one, and also a topic that I'm uh, I can relate in a certain way more to because uh, my job is as a mathematician uh, in a company that is at least related to uh, sports betting and also monitoring. The allegation is that the 6-1 win of PSG against Cervenas Vesta was fixed and what's even worse is, I mean the bet was that uh, Cervenas Vesta will lose by five goals or more. That was where a lot of um, high amounts were put on and the allegations are that it was actually a high-ranking club official that uh, did uh, the bet or had the bet placed so uh, of course when you look at the way the game went it seemingly you know it was 4-0 at halftime there was not much uh, resistance from there was some, but you know, I don't want to uh, necessarily blame the players themselves. But you know, um, I thought you know it went four nil. It was five nil. At this this point, the result would have stood, and I think it would have been probably seen as more obvious if it would have just ended five nil. Uh, but they pulled one goal back, five one, and then they gave up one. So you know, it doesn't look as um, tricky or as fixed maybe as one might assume at first still those allegations are true that's that's not a good sign of course there's no uh no blame put on psg uh and i can i can actually believe it because on if you want to fix a match uh the one-sided route is sufficient if you just tell your team to lose uh it's much easier than than uh tell us a team to win yeah, I would I be surprised? Um, honestly, not that that much. I mean, uh, all of the match fixing news are usually coming from former Yugoslavia. I mean, I have a Croatian colleague who always uh, jokes that whenever there's some match fixing, there's usually a Croatian involved, and in many cases that was. Now it serves. Uh, It's not the people there, but you know, um, there is enough corruption going on in these countries, and I'm saying this very well aware that you know, uh, my country is also not perfect. But the power structures in the former Balkan countries are unfortunately geared towards exactly uh, these kinds of things. Um, I honestly hope that uh, the rumors prove to be wrong. If they were proved to be true, I'm afraid 
this will have to go punished for Jovena's Vesta. I was thinking about it. I mean, you don't want to punish, you neither want to punish the fans, you neither want to punish the players. But how do you get to the officials? Well, first of all, uh, there's a legal process involved. But in order to make it really hurt and send a signal, yeah, you are probably going to banish them. The problem is that uh, there has been enough crowd trouble and trouble anyway in these parts where it's already known that it's a hot area and you know there are bands or uh, racial slogans and all that kind of stuff that you know this will be used if if Travenas Vesta receives a ban this will be used uh, by the club officials that you know you see the big guys are again against this and what's the point so yeah uh, I'm curious what will happen I hope I hope I will get more info I mean I'm still waiting for what happened at the, um, the Belgian raid at the end of October, I think it was. We haven't heard much of it. We just heard back then lots of news that there are a lot of scandals and even the uh, Brugge coach was indicted. But since then, I personally haven't heard much. I'd be interested, maybe I have to look at this. Okay, so for so much to the match fixing. I it's just something interesting to watch. I can see how it happens. I can I also have an idea of how this is monitored uh, a little bit. So yeah, interesting. Second, uh, yesterday uh, when I posted a video two two days ago on Mourinho being sacked and um, Michael Carrick taking over. This was the initial news. Now it's Ole Gunnar Sorsha. Of course, from the late 90s, the Super Sub. I honestly know too little about him. I think I remember vaguely that he was to become a coach, uh, but I honestly don't know much. He's a United legend. I think that that seems uh, good enough. I mean, he is the guy who scored the, that that winning goal for United. So. Maybe this will command some respect. Um, I do have a little bit my doubts because uh, that United squad uh, doesn't seem to be that easily wowed by large figures. And um, I think if it was Roy Keane uh, as a person, I'm not saying as a coach, but as a person, uh, Roy Keane would demand a lot more respect. That I can say for sure if you take any of the Neville Clark brothers. I think that uh, could work potentially better. But gotta see how he's doing. I wish him the best. You know, I'm not a big United fan, but you know, I, the United being one of the prime clubs uh, in Europe, every time there's a coaching change, it's an interesting story. It's the same thing as Real Madrid or whatever. This is a big story to me, so um, I'm curious. I don't. While well, I'm not a big United fan, I don't like my United being that down and out. I think uh, I, w I would like them to be in the top and that they are a formidable opponent. Um, Europe is better for it. That's one of those really storied franchises um, that have been winning trophies forever. Maybe it was a little bit too much during the Alex Ferguson years. Uh, but to be honest, a United has to not only play in the Champions League, they also have to challenge for uh, the Premier League regularly and not uh, be among the also right. Just my feeling. Okay, let's talk about some Bundesliga action. Uh, the big news is Dortmund lost for the first time uh, to lowly Düsseldorf, who were in 16th at the time uh, that they played. And I saw the highlights of that game. I saw the highlights only of two games. The rest is just hearsay. Uh, where Dortmund controlled the early game, playing in all yellow. Uh, actually getting, getting, getting a goal, but Pulisic was uh, offside when the goal was scored and he steps over the ball. I know why they why the call the offside. Um, I think a little bit more awareness would help here a lot. So it was one. It would have been one nil Dortmund. 
then a wonderful counter uh, attack by Dusseldorf puts it uh, puts Dusseldorf up one nil uh, at halftime. Uh, same guy who scored three against Bayern Munich, so he's kind of a giant killer. Um, and it's funny, Dusseldorf gets a point in uh, Munich, wins against Dortmund, has only four points, uh, four wins uh, on their side, but uh, there's some impressive stuff in there. Might, might be enough to not get the drop. So yeah, Dusseldorf uh, makes uh, is one nil, and then with a wonderful, really wonderful long range shot, they make it two nil. Um, when Alcacer comes on and cuts the lead in half, uh, but was not enough. So Dortmund loses. They had a nine point margin, so you know. Uh, it's not a devastating loss. If this is just a one-off, they're fine. Uh, it's more interesting to see how what will be the larger impact. I think Dortmund will play one more game uh, before the end of the year, and then there's the short winter break in Germany. Uh, the opponents took advantage of that loss. Uh, Gladbach won 2 0 against Nuremberg, where. Nuremberg had a huge chance at the very, very, very beginning. That was all that there was for Nuremberg club uh, very safely uh, getting the 2 0 win, even missing a penalty by Torgan Hazard. Um, and the game was in the books. So uh, that was never in doubt. A little bit more in doubt was the big name game which between Bayern and Leipzig, third against fourth. Um, Bayern ended up 1 0 winners. I haven't seen much of the game. But yeah. Um, that I was hoping for a nil-nil, but now it is uh, Dortmund 39, Gladbach 33, and Bayern 33. Leipzig still in fourth at 28 points because uh, Frankfurt only managed a 2-2 draw in the derby against Mainz. I mean, Mainz and Frankfurt are kind of close towns, so uh, there is a rivalry there. Mainz took twice the lead, Frankfurt equalized twice. Um, and I have to say, since they had this impressive winning streak, uh, once it got snapped, they have not won yet. So Frankfurt, they were in fourth place and now they are sitting 27 points. It's a little bit of snail's race for this fourth spot uh, between Leipzig and Frankfurt. They all seem not that great. Wolfsburg is having a resurgence, it seems, um, they, because they are getting higher up. Uh, in particular, they won 2-0 against Stuttgart, who now drops in the relegation zone. Because uh, this of one. Uh, I really hope Stuttgart does not get relegated. Uh, it's one of the sides. I mean, it's bad enough that Köln, after having some successful seasons, had such a bad drop last year. Köln is a team I like, Stuttgart is a team I like. Uh, and they're not having a good... Schalke is also a team that I have slight sympathies for. Also not doing all that well. Uh, from the teams that are also a little bit on top, I wrote down Hertha Augsburg. Uh, playing a 2-2 draw, um, so Hertha is, is still in contention. I think Hoffenheim drew a 1-2. Um, so we have 5th Frankfurt at 27, 6th uh, Wolfsburg at 25, Hoffenheim is 24 and Hertha is 24. And then there's a little bit of a drop. So uh, that's the top in Germany. Um, I still think Dortmund looks comfortable, but you know, 6 points. If Bayern gets a run, uh, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be interesting, that's for sure. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, I really hope Bayern will not win. Uh, yeah, then rather Dortmund than Bayern, that's for sure. Um, but I honestly would like to see someone else win it. Uh, Gladbach would be. I'm not a. As I, say, I said, current, I like current, so. Uh, Natural rival is Gladbach, but uh, if Mönchengladbach wins the champions, uh, the championship in Germany, that would be a huge story, I think. And I would actually be quite happy with that. And then we have the small meta of the League Cup in England. I actually don't know the results, but I know already the Manchester City and Burton Albion from the. Uh, I think it's the. Is it the first division now? It's the third level, third tier team. Uh, have made it to the semi-finals and Chelsea with a late goal beat Bournemouth 1-0 I think it was by Azar and so it's Arsenal Tottenham that was actually the 
big name game. Uh, Arsenal playing at home, and you know, we all remember the 4 2 uh, that they played earlier this year, just a few weeks ago. Um, this game was not as great. Um, Arsenal dominant proceedings, both did not feel their absolute first rank squads, but they feel the decent squads. I always find it weird that, you know, for those, uh, this is, nah, it's not weird, but you give, it tells a lot if you give your reserve goal goalkeeper chances, similar to with Milan uh, in the Europa League. I mean, everyone says they take it seriously, but if you don't play your first choice keeper, um, you're not sending signs that you're taking it very serious, obviously. Uh, so Arsenal dominate proceedings, however, Tottenham launched two beautiful counter-attacks. The first one was a pass of Ali through pass on Son, who just runs uh, right on the goal. And slots it home after Mkhitaryan actually had a really huge chance missed. Then in the second half, Harry Kane comes on and within a few seconds has a lot of space, three touches to control the ball, uh, lobs it over the Arsenal defense, and Dele Alli uh, just has clear path to goal by himself, lobs it over the goalie. 2-0 Tottenham. He then gets hit by a bottle, which might cause some trouble to Arsenal. And yeah, that was that. 2-0 Tottenham. So Tottenham, Chelsea, City and Burton Albion are in the semi-final of the League Cup. As I said, I mention it because this is a game that uh, has been talked about, but I, I honestly I find this League Cup competition uh, rather stupid. And lastly, the biggest game uh, <laughs> between Real Madrid and Kashima Endless. Um, yeah, for five minutes, Kashima had something going, and Real slowly took over. And Bale scores three goals uh, long before the halftime. Very nice taking shot, very nice move. Second one right after, I think in the 52nd or something like that, where um, the goalie and the last defender have miscommunication. Defender, they both run towards the ball at the edge of the box. Defender touch, touches ball, puts in the path of Bale, which just gets loaded from the empty net. And then uh, Marcelo, just two minutes later, Marcelo decides to be unselfish after the chance botched. Sees Bale far out on the right. Bale slots it home, beautiful shot. 3 0. At that point, I turned the game off, so that was the game I was watching. Um, I know saw that Kashima pulled one goal back, but uh, it is one of those that I think that the unorthodox style of play of the non European teams causes maybe Real Madrid some initial trouble or any European some initial trouble. But once you've figured it out and or you get an early goal, you know. You just gotta get with the program. Uh, once you figure out their weaknesses and how unorthodox they play, it's usually only a matter of time uh, until they make the goal sense. They really did not have to exert themselves, and that's why it's Real Madrid against Al Ain. I was actually thinking of making a, a FIFA Club World Cup jersey review. Uh, not sure if I will get to it and if it is. Made at this point. I mean, I looked at River, I looked at uh, uh, Real Madrid already, and the other teams. Kashima has interesting jerseys, let's put it that way. Alain has the Salzburg template, that's horrible. So, yeah, not sure if it's worth it doing it. Let me know if you would like to see me review the jerseys at the Club Logo. I think that was Chivas in Guadalajara. We have a horrible jersey this year, uh, not a typical cheapest jersey, so... <sighs> Just doesn't feel right to me. And so, I think Real Madrid will win this. I think they could even feel the second string squad and win this against Alain. Yes, Alain has been resilient, but that's also a team that has been 3-0 down uh, to a team, an amateur team from New Zealand. So. Uh, I really don't see them uh, causing a lot of trouble for 
was Blancos Goss and, and it will be at Fergal for Real Madrid in, in the road. The closest, Kashima was the closest to ever uh, get a crazy result and beat Real Madrid, which will have been great, but not this year. Okay, that was a longer video than I anticipated it to be, but you know, there were some topics that I wanted to get off my chest and wanted to talk about. Um, let me know which games you were watching, uh, whether you agree with most of my thoughts. Um, I want to hear especially thoughts on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, maybe a little bit the match fixes scandal. Maybe, yes. Driving with a different car today, I haven't realized. Uh, there's a lot of stuff hanging here that comes into the camera, made by my girls. Um, and yeah, uh, let me know a little bit more. I, I, I probably will, will try to watch some more of this league highlights. thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel will be subscribe button is right here in the center uh, to get more videos like these I actually will post some screen uh, screenshots or screens for uh, playlists of my channel so, so you can go directly watching it might interest you as well and with that